This is Jeff, engineer with Borderline Network Security, and today in this short video, I'm going to be showing you how to properly install the Aperture 5 Core Console. Now this is required for all installations of Aperture. You have to have a Core Console where all of the various servers back up their data to. And first and foremost, we need to ensure that your server meets the minimum requirements. It must be a 64-bit server running either Windows 7, Windows 2008, or Windows 2008 R2. Now any of those will work. The hardware requirements, they're going to be a little bit different because every environment's a bit different. It's going to depend on how many servers you have, frequency and backups that you need. I would really recommend you give us a call. We can work with you one-on-one to tailor uh, the hardware for your environment for exactly what you're going to be needing. Let's go ahead and get started with the install here. I've got the core already downloaded. I'm going to open it up and go through the installer. Okay, so we have the core installation welcome screen up. We'll go ahead and next through this. Accept the license agreement. Now, if you've never installed an Aperture product on this machine, you probably will have some prerequisites that need to be installed. For this instance, I only have one. You may see where there's five or six prerequisites that need to be installed, and they're all evolving around the needs to tie in for SQL tie-ins for the various agents uh, that could be out on your network. So go ahead and just tell it to install the prerequisites, and we'll go ahead and click Next as soon as this is completed. Now please do note, depending on the installer that you download, if you download a quick installer, it will not have all the prerequisites built into it, so it may need to download from the internet. In this example, I've downloaded, as we have on our website, the installer with all of the prerequisites built in. It's a little bit larger of a download, however, it's a lot quicker on the install. So we can click here and see the details that our prerequisites completed. I'll next through it. And here's where we can set up where we want to install the Aperture Core 2. I'm going to leave the default paths because I do want it on the C drive. However, if you want it on a different drive or location, you could change that here. As well as you would change the port number that it would communicate with the agents over. This is also the port that you would connect to it for management. So please do note this port. If you do customize it, you will need to note it down. Installation will commence here. It's a fairly quick install. Once the installation part is finished, it will register components, copy over new files where it needs to, where they need to be. Okay, so we've completed with our installation here. Click Finish. And you'll notice that here on our desktop, we now have a core console icon. If we double click this, it's actually going to launch our default web browser. And it will open up the core console web page. Now, you can open this web page from either the core console here locally, or you can do it from any other network connected or internet connected machine which can access this server. And you'll notice that whenever you launch the core console, it will prompt you for your credentials to log in. It wants to ensure it knows who you are. I'll go ahead and provide my credentials here so we can open it up. Once the core console loads, we'll notice that we first need to configure the core. We'll click Setup Core here in the top right. And from here, we'll have a welcome screen. We'll set up a repository or email notifications. We'll create an encryption key if we so choose. Uh, and then we can also deploy agents for protection. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave the display name uh, as the default, which is the machine name that we've installed the core to. From here, I'm gonna set up a repository. I'm gonna add a storage location. Now granted, this can be a storage location, either a local disk, it could be attached disk, uh, it could be a SAN, it could be a NAS, anything Windows can read or write to, we can add here. So, all we'll do is we'll come in here and we'll simply type in the path of where we want our backup uh, to be. And we would define our metadata path and our data path uh, 
I like to put them in separate folders just so that way I know what it is. Here we go. And at the bottom, we're going to define the size of our actual repository. It could be very small, very large, it's going to depend on your media as well as how much storage space you're going to actually need. For demo purposes here, I'm just going to put it to a 10 gig partition. Uh, so go ahead and hit save. And that's going to validate the file, it's going to create, and it's actually going to take up that space on our drive to mark it uh, so that way nothing else can use the space and we have problems later. And we'll notice here it's added it, and I have a 10 gig, a 10 gig repository. We'll move on to the next step. Here you could set up email notifications if you want. For now, I'm just going to skip it. This would be specific information for your domain, so that way you can send email alerts when various events happen on your system. And here we would set up an encryption key, and the encryption key would encrypt, of course, our file. And again, though, for demo purposes, I'm just going to leave it with no encryption key. And here our last and final step is where we can actually deploy agents. It has a link here where we can download the installer. I, however, have already downloaded the installer and have it, so I can deploy an agent. I'm going to click the Finish button. And we'll be taken back to the main core screen this time, no longer having the setup core option since it has already been done. We do, however, have a question mark here for any help information that we can open up and get information about various features, very extensive. So now that we have the core completely set up, we're ready to deploy agents. That actually, however, will be in another video. So please remember if you have any questions or doubts, don't hesitate to give us a call. We can be reached 760-736-8100. I or one of my colleagues will be more than happy to assist you uh, with whatever questions or needs that you have. I hope you have a great day.